Give us a sense uh, of the extent to which this war may have either suspended or at least prolonged some of the fight on climate. Well, thanks for having me, David. And I have to say, I do agree with Mr. Kuchifani in terms of the short-term problem. If uh, Russia accounts for about 40% of Europe's natural gas imports, obviously, and they've now committed that uh, by the end of the year, they'll cut those by two thirds. We're gonna have a scramble. You've seen what the US is willing to do in terms of shipments, et cetera, uh, to the EU. So we're going to have a short-term problem on fossil fuels and the use of gas, oil, and I think actually an uptick in the use of coal. However, it's really laid bare this issue of uh, our over-dependence on fossil fuels, uh, the indisputable science of the International pa Panel on Climate Change that says, if you thought it was bad, it turns out it's worse in terms of uh, climate change. We're not nearly on track to uh, keep to this 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, temperature rise by the end of the century. So we've got a problem in that the science says we're not getting there. We're too heavily dependent on fossil fuels and fossil fuels are, as it turns out, kind of dicey at the moment in terms of uh, ability to even get them. So I think that you're going to see, and we are seeing just in our own businesses, uh, uh, a focus on renewables as a risk mitigant and obviously a risk mitigant against the, uh, the climate issues at the same time, but a risk mitigant against being so dependent on uh, other nations that we may be at war at with at any given point. Well, you mentioned, Anne, uh, the goals that we all have to keep it to 1.5 degrees centigrade. And we've got a lot of fairly ambitious targets being set by various countries, including the United States, including President Biden, as well as by corporations. Before the war in Ukraine happened, were we on track to meet those uh, commitments? Uh, maybe not, but we were close. So the commitments were that uh, you had about 90% of uh, the global GDP that was committed to net zero. Most of them felt that they would make it. Now, this is countries and companies, shall we say, were en route to make it by 2050, maybe 2060. But that was a reach. Now what we're dealing with is uh, we've got a little bit of a setback, and I think there are bigger issues at play, which is where's the money? Yeah. And that just hasn't been accounted for. And when I say where is the money, it has been estimated out of COP26, uh, the UN climate conference, out of COP26, that we would need four to five trillion dollars a year, so annually, for the next decade, maybe 30 years. So at least 10 more likely 30 years, to ameliorate this problem. And where is the money? So that's the really issue at the moment, to just be very practical about it. You could uh, roll up all the governments and all the philanthropy in the world, and if you don't put capital markets into this, it's not happening. And we don't have that synergy between capital markets and government the way we have when we have had enormous problems in the past. So armaments during World War II, uh, even COVID, to, to be able to make and distribute the vaccines that were needed globally, you needed this composition of companies and governments to come together. And I think that's what's needed here. Well, and I must say, you wrote, well, I think, as a fascinating column for Bloomberg on this very subject, certainly made me aware of things I hadn't thought of, because we've heard about carbon offsets in the past, where corporations buy uh, trees to plant, things like that. But you have a different way of enlisting capital markets, you just say. Explain how you think it might work. Thanks. So if you give me a minute, it's slightly complicated, and I hope I, I, I'm going to resist the uh, the alphabet soup and acronyms that you so often hear, but just really practically speaking, if we and we do emit about 53 billion tons of CO2 a year, um, how are we going to decarbonize the world over time? Okay, that's, that's the problem statement. So let's just use companies right now, because I know more about capital markets and companies than I know about government, so I'll just take that on. If that were the denominator, then what you're talking about is all the companies uh, in the world, and right now there are 5,000 top companies, 450 financial firms, 
$130 trillion that have already said, yes, we'll get to net zero. So we're well on our way here of commitments. If, if they all would make a commitment to try to get first to carbon neutrality, what does that mean? It means that you buy your, renew you buy your uh, electricity from renewables, you reduce your water usage, your paper usage, your fleet of cars are on are electric cars, you buy sustainable aviation fuel for your airplanes, and so on and so forth. Even if you did all of that, and that would be hard to do, and it will take several years for companies to get there, even if you did all of that, you just simply can't get all the way there because uh, the grids are not all connected. Uh, the world is in different shapes in terms of iterations of emerging markets versus mature markets. So let's just suspend disbelief and say you can get 90% of the way there. Now you have a 10% delta. Now let's go back to that 53 billion uh, uh, tons of emissions every year of CO2. Okay, so 10% would be 5 billion uh, tons that we were trying to now make up for. Are you with me? Yes, I am. Okay. So how do you deal with that? Right now, the way that people have been dealing with it in the early stages is to, to buy an offset. And what an offset is, is you're essentially decarbonizing the world outside your own parameters. So uh, you are either planting trees or preserving trees, uh, creating forests, preserving forests. And in doing that, you are uh, reducing uh, CO2, uh, but not within your own framework. So you're buying right. it elsewhere, but you are reducing that emission. Well, there are only so many trees and there are only so many forests in the world. So uh, last year, all in, that represented 350 million tons of CO2. I just told you that we need to annually at least do, uh, if we did this formula, 5 billion where are we going to get them? We don't have enough nature-based right. solutions. Therefore, let's use that money to buy into green technology. Uh, the International Energy Agency says we aren't even halfway there to even imagining what kind of um, energy uh, companies and solutions and technologies we need to solve the problem. Right. So let's put our money there, get get credit for offsets and and get right. this thing going on a scalable accelerated way right. that it just isn't today so, so you have private companies as i understand is essentially putting the capital into developing new technology we need things like green hydrogen things like that that we need desperately do we need the government to be involved in this can capital markets and private sector do it on their own or do we need government maybe not even in terms of regulation but at least in terms of monitoring and, uh, and giving us standards yeah we need we need the government now right now this whole um schematic of offsets, of, of doing a carbon audit, of disclosing, of buying offsets, that's all done outside of government. It's changing, however. Why is it changing? Because the EU has set laws, regulations, and rules. That's changed things. They've set a taxonomy that's like an encyclopedia of what is what. And they've uh, set a framework for uh, disclosure, and they've set a timetable. So given that, we now are off to the races. And recently, the SEC, um, the Securities Commission, has said, hey, you know what? All these companies that are saying that they're going to go net zero, we, we, can't, we don't have a law for that, but we do have a law for disclosure. We do have a rule for disclosure. So disclose it. So now what you have is in the U EU, it's a law. In the U.S., it's rules and regulations. We're going to have to disclose. That brings daylight in, transparency. Uh, you know, we've had for years this TCFD, the Task Force on Climate-Related Disclosures, a voluntary program. But now that the SEC is in and now that the EU has set rules, I think that's the role government is going to play. And I think that if they would encourage us to look at offsets, again, disclosable, uh, transparent, but if they would encourage this, we could accelerate the pace and we could actually be putting money into technologies we're going to need and we don't have them.